Hello and welcome to the tutorial on comparing numbers. And in this tutorial, we're going to cover numbers up to 500. And where necessary, we're going to use the number grid. Well, first things first, do you recall the three symbols we use when comparing numbers. Let's write them down over here. That means less than. We have the equals and greater than. So let's look at our first example. Suppose we have these two numbers. We've got 276 the other number is 259. So 276 and 259. What we're going to do here is we're going to label the digits so that we can work through them. So let's take number 276. The 6 is a unit, 7s, 10s, and the 2 is hundreds. Let's do the same for the other side. We're not going to go through this in detail because you already know this. Now the first thing we do is, let's look at the digit on the left of each of the numbers. In this case, it happens to be the hundreds. We have two hundreds here, and for the other number, we also have two hundreds. The numbers are exactly the same. Now when the first digit is exactly the same, we then have to look at the rest of the number. So let's do that. The first one, the number is 76. The next one, the number is 59. Now again, I'm sure you can work this out, but let's see which symbol we're going to put between these two numbers using the number grid. So let's pull up our number grid. There it is the number grid from 1 to 100. Now, so the first number is 276. We're going to ignore the 2 and we're going to concentrate on 76. Can you find 76 on the number grid? Great. Now, look for the second number. Again, we're going to ignore the 2. It's 59. Look for 59. Now, which one is closer to number 1? If you were to go through them, in order, which number comes first? Whichever number, com whichever number comes first is the smaller number. And that's right, it is 59. So now we know which symbol we have to put here. It's 59, so the arrow points to the smaller number. Here it is, it points to the smaller number. So 200 and se So if we read this, it becomes 276 is greater than 259. And it really is as simple as that. Now let's try another example. Now let's suppose we've got the number 367 and we've got number 388. Now, which symbol do you think we need to place between these numbers for it to make sense? Let's label the numbers again. We've got units, tens, and hundreds. Units, tens, and hundreds. So we've done that. So now let's compare the numbers. We're going to look at the first digit of each number. In this case, it is the hundreds, and this one has got a three. The second number has also got a 3. So when we're comparing them, they are exactly the same. When they are the same, we have to look at the rest of the number. So in the first one, we've got 67. In the second one, we've got 88. So again, let's pull up our number grid. There it is. So now, try to find the first number, which is 67. Can you find 67? Great. The next number is 88. Have you found 88? Brilliant. 
So which number comes first if you start from 1 and count forwards? So you've got the number grid. Go through it line by line. Which one comes first? That's right. It's 67. So 67 is smaller. So now we know which way the arrow has to point. It has to point towards 67. There you go. It is pointing to the smaller number. So this now reads 367 is smaller than 388. It's nice and easy, wasn't it? Now let's look at one final example where the hundreds are different. Suppose you have this number, 427, and you've got the other number, which is 286. Now again, let's label the digits. You've got units, tens, and hundreds. But units, tens, and hundreds. Now this is going to be quite a, a slightly different example. Let's compare the hundreds. The first digit is the hundreds, so we've got four here, and we've got two here. So we're comparing the 4 and the 2. Well, we know this. 4 and the 2. 4 is bigger, is greater than 2. So we can now put our arrow in. 4 is greater than 2. So 400 is greater than 200. Don't forget, the 2, sorry, the arrow is pointing towards a smaller one. The smaller one is 200. Now in this case, we didn't even look at the rest of the number, because we don't have to. 400 is greater than 200. It makes no difference what the rest of these numbers are. 400 is greater than 200. Therefore, the arrow looks like this. So those are three examples of how we compare numbers up to 500 using the number grid, and in the third example, where we do not have to use the number grid.